Hey everyone, James Reeves with TFB TV. Welcome to IWA in Nuremberg, Germany. What I love about this show, this is my first time attending IWA, I get to see a bunch of really cool shit that we don't have in the United States, and a lot of it tends to be really high quality and also maybe a little pricey. I'm with my new friend here, Thomas, and Thomas, you're going to tell us about your line of revolvers that you make under the name Spore, which is your, your last name, I assume, correct? Yeah, that's right. Hello, my name is Thomas Spore, and I'm the founder and producer of the new Spore revolver line. Why don't you tell us how you got started? Okay, we started one and a half year ago with our own production of revolvers. In the older times, we were um, uh, tuning and building parts for Smith and Wesson revolvers, and from time to time, we were thinking to change and to remove some parts. And one and a half year, we started to be, build completely our own revolver, and yeah, that's where we are right now. So. So you manufacture all of these yourself? Yes, that's right. We have a small CNC uh, company in Germany and uh, yeah, with eight, 18 employers and now we build all these parts by our own. Even the screws are done with at our shop. And Well, let's talk about the models that we have here. Like, what are we looking at? What kind of calibers? What's popular? What do you guys sell a lot of? Okay, the most popular caliber is 357 Magnum, of course. And now we have a brand new interchangeable cylinder, which is 9mm Luger, working with a moon clip. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we also have a, a 38 special um, cylinder for some shooters who like this stuff. And now we have a brand new 44 Magnum, uh, which we introduce at the EVA right now, but uh, that's, that's all of our caliber range. Why would you just decide to start making your own revolvers? I mean, why not just keep tuning Smith & Wessons or modifying those? Um, because for tuning, for especially for the European market, you need a very fine trigger, and that cannot be done with metal injection molding parts, which are using the bigger companies. So we do all the parts by wire cutting, and they are very uh, have a very uh, thin blade uh, on the trigger, and you can do a very light single action trigger. So and it, it will release for a long time. So it's fair to say then, because that's the the first thing that came to your mind. The most important thing here is that you want to be able to manufacture a revolver with an extremely fine, sensitive trigger. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And uh, the, the parts are made of, uh, they have, we, first we do some milling job, and then we do hardening first, and then we cut it off with the wire, wire cutting machine. So um, they are nearly like drop-in parts, and you have a perfect trigger job done. So why would I purchase one of your revolvers versus a large production revolver other than the trigger, right? I mean, what else, what does a spore revolver do that a large production revolver doesn't? Okay, we have a special uh, polygonal barrel, which is made here in Germany. It's called Forged, of course, and it has a 300 millimeter twist, which is also excellent shooting for nine millimeter. So you can use it for both. Uh, we have a special weight construction on the barrel, so every it's every barrel and every gun is made for special um, shooting disciplines. And yeah, every part is made uh, not of forged material, so we cut it out of a rough part, and uh, it's very high quality. Is there any parts compatibility with any pre-existing designs? Like, I mean, well, can I use any parts from, say, a Smith Wesson 686 or something at any point in this? No, that's not possible. It's a metric system, so the screws and all these things will not fit. Yeah. Well, what's your uh, your most popular model? We talked about calibers, but I mean, it looks like you have a bunch of, what, six-inch revolvers here on the table? Yeah, there are only six-inch revolvers on the table, but we also have a four-inch model. Okay, let's start with our standard model. Uh, I mean, it has a uh, standard look for me. It has, this, uh, we call it square head, not round head. It's very modern at the moment, so we also have a... Um, a square barrel we call it and it has a six inch barrel for that model that's that's our best selling model and then we have the same revolver uh, as a four inch or yeah four inch barrel model and these are our standards and then you also can order them with a pvd coating so it looks like a black but so this is just like the standard but with the pvd coat. yeah it has this extra uh, PVD coating which makes it very reliable against scratchers and it's these revolvers will look uh, like new for many years so it's yeah I would prefer this one because it's as I said it's reliable against scratches and 
Yeah, it they looks good look too. Like it really, yeah, yeah, it looks great. It has a. Uh, it, it's not. It's not really. It's more blue than uh, like. Uh, yeah, it's more blue than black. So I. I really like it when it's shining. And what about these two right here? Are these the same gun, just with Picatinny rail on yeah. the barrel and? And for sp for special sport shooting, we have the tactical division model, which has a Picatinny rail on the top and on the bottom, and it's, it has a it has an unflooded. Cylind unflooded, yeah. Unflooded. Yeah, yeah. No, so no, no. That's good. Your English is great. By yeah, the way. no. <laughs> no, it is. But it has, it has an unflooted uh, cylinder, so many people like it in Germany like this because it's it's looking heavy and yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. for shooting. It's it's I mean it's a modern style, so I like it. I prefer this one. For sport shooting. And what do we have right ah, here? This, this is our brand, brand new uh, prototype. So we, ha we have a, we have a small frame for the 44 Remington caliber, and it says it's it's built with a small cylinder and a small frame. But so you only have five shots inside, and yeah, that's that's. Uh, uh, That's all you need for 44 Magnum, right? Just yeah, five shots. Only five shots is <laughs> absolutely enough, and for the for the weight, that's uh, so it's so it's comfortable to shoot. So we have a, a, a Wolfram, and I'm not sure what's the name in English. It's a it's a special uh, material which is very heavy, even like gold, mm -hmm. but it's helping you to make to reduce the um, the recoil and uh, the jump of the gun. So yeah. So what does the pricing start at for one? I mean, obviously, these are very sophisticated pieces of machinery. So yeah. I imagine they're going to be quite expensive, but let's just get it out there. What does one of these cost to uh, start? For the European market, the uh, standard model will start at 2,200 euro without the coating. And uh, especially the coating is more as plus 350 euro. So I honestly thought it was going to be more expensive than that. No, it's not much more expensive. So we have uh, very modern machines with um, uh, robot systems on the side. So it's it's running 24 hours a day. And yeah, I think the price is uh, somewhere between uh, a very high priced model and a lower priced model. So it's quite interesting for the European market. There's a rumor going around the IWA show floor that these might be coming to the United States. Is that true? Uh, we hope to find a partner. In, we hope to find a partner in the U.S. So um, let's see what happens in the future. We we well, are open for all sides. Thomas, I'm sure that you already are, are going to have a lot of fans after this video comes out who are really excited to see this. So I hope that pans out for you. Thank you very much for, for walking me through this line. No, no, no. Thank you for your time and thank you as usual for watching thank TFB you. TV. Guys, stay tuned for more coverage from IWA here in Nuremberg, Germany. Take care.